And who? Mangan. Mangan. Matt Mangan, not Mangan. I'm telling me. Yeah. Take two points off. Censor the tape. Edit. Edit. <laughs> Manganese, bron Manganese bronze, yes. Uh, they use that for making the uh, stamping on books because gold is too expensive and doesn't last as long. That is, it peels up. So I said, that's what he said. Well, there's got to be gold behind the wall here then. Oh. <laughs> I said, wait a minute. You did 10 of them at the test run and you were right on every last one of them. They didn't seem to to draw the dowsing rod up, and he said, oh, that's because I wasn't so tired. <laughs> you see how they come up with excuses? They always do, and they're ingenious at it. Even if they've never done it before, they develop the skill instantly, somehow. It just springs into their fertile minds. And um, so we, we weren't taking any of these arguments, of course. Then he said, well, wait a minute. I want to show you how it works with the gold coins. I said, okay, show me how it works for the gold coin. Now, this, this is what got him. He put the gold coins in one of the cups and he walked over and chung, down went the, the rod. I said, well, move it over here. Chung, down went the rod again. Chung, down it went. I said, uh, so you're sensitive only to gold. He says, only to gold. The rod is now tuned to gold. I said, those are not gold coins. <laughs> those are the secretary of dollars, you see. Them? And they're manganese bronze. There's no gold in them, they're not even gold plated. They said, no, no, these are gold. These are gold, these are U.S. coins, gold U.S. coins. I said, no, they're not. There's no gold in there whatsoever. And he left arguing with me that these were gold coins because the rod went down. He knew it, you could see the rod go down. What other proof do you need? Well then, and this is the big surprise, he left, went out to the parking lot, I saw him to the door. His lady friend had been there for the last four hours in the car, <laughs> in the sun, and we didn't know it. And she came to the door and asked her a drink of water. I brought her in and made her iced tea. <laughs> I thought it was worth at least that. I mean, goodness sakes, the poor woman was out there for four hours in that blazing sun, and he was inside doing silly things with a stick. <laughs> what can I say? Now, this is, this is one of the few cases that we actually tested at the James Randi Educational Foundation because my agreement with the applicants is if you want me to be absent, because I can put out negative vibrations, as we all know, I say I will agree to be absent. I will also agree not to even know when the test is taking place because I might put out negative vibrations that will go through space and time, you see. And, but I, I don't want to be notified until after they're done. That's what we did with the the homeopathy tests at the Royal Academy, by the way, we made sure that they said, we'll tell you exactly when they're going to take place. I said, no, no, I don't want to know. I want you to do them and then wait at least three days afterwards before you notify me that they've been done and don't tell me the results. Oh, okay. And I explained why, because they say that I can put up negative vibration. <laughs> that would, would cause them to fail. So Mike Guska has now said that he'll be tested again. But I have to go to Clearwater, Florida, and I have to do this, and I have to do that. And I said, Mike, I, I don't know how to spell that on the computer, but I think an approximation of it, I can assure you. This is what we have to go through. And um, maybe you're not wondering too broadly as to why we've decided to terminate the Million Dollar Challenge. It's one reason. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of clerical time and, and Cogitation time, phone calls, and writing back and forth and up and down the staircase. It's uh, it's really a, a major task, and it occupies far too much of our time. Where we can be be doing much more useful things. But we'll talk about that later this afternoon uh, when I address you in my inimitable fashion. However, that's a, that is one case from beginning to end. Uh, Mike has uh, now said that I've got to go to Clearwater, and I say no. That's all there is to it. Not going. So uh, maybe, maybe I'll find myself near Clearwater one of these days and uh, I'll drop in, Mike, hi, I'm here. You got those fake gold coins? Let's do it again. So that, that's an example of how these things uh, actually do take place. And there are many other examples we can go through, but it would take for hours and hours. Uh, any questions about that? Yes, uh, yes, right here. Yeah, you, you used the word permanent. Are you going to eliminate the, the 
Oh, you don't know about that. Oh, yeah, all because of you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was announced uh, uh, at New Year's uh, that uh, in two years, from March the 6th, which is when we initiated it 10 years ago, um, it will be terminated at that point, and we're going to put the money to much better use, or at least keep it in, the, in, the, in our funds, and uh, we may have all kinds of projects that we can use it for, uh, because it just hasn't worked out, and people, uh, though they're applying, they don't seem to be able to meet the criteria, and they, again, they don't seem to be able to state what they can do under what circumstances and with what accuracy. Those three simple things that I outlined to you. Three? Three. And um, so it is being terminated. I'm sorry this is shocking news to you, because I presume you figured you had the money on, right? <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Nothing great deterrent against the big guys, too. Well, yeah, but they, they don't respond to it, you see. And you know what Sylvia Brown said. First of all, she, she didn't know how to contact <laughs> Here's a woman who talks to dead people and she can't use a telephone book. And if you send her to Google, there are 1.6 million references to me on Google at the moment. I don't know what it will be tomorrow. But nonetheless, she couldn't find it. Now she says that uh, she doesn't want to be tested because I'm not a godly person. <laughs> How could we possibly be tested by an ungodly person? Uh, anyway, that's uh, that's the way that works or it doesn't work. We had a question from back there. Yeah. I've got a question about controls on this. This is, this is one of the few cases where we've got an actual test from end to end. With uh, this Mike guy or Edge or whatever his name is, mm -hmm. when you're testing for gold coins, how do you ensure that you can't essentially just pick up and read the vibration of an empty styrofoam cup and that kind of thing? Because in this particular case, I'd be worried that uh, the one with the more weight in it wouldn't shake and he might be able to pick that up as he's clunking around with his big stick with his girlfriend yeah. in the car. Yeah, well, we're on a, a, a solid concrete floor that has got tiles on top of it. He's not likely to pick up vibrations on it. And uh, it was not translucent or transparent in any way. It was quite opaque. In fact, as a matter of fact, they were lined with paper. I put a paper cone inside, glued inside, to make sure that, that uh, light cast to the side wouldn't give any shadows or anything. And the, the ingot was quite flat and fitted in beautifully. We tested it out in advance to make sure that it couldn't be seen. And he would, certainly wasn't allowed to touch it or to uh, even approach it or touch it with a stick or anything, or that would have given it away because the styrofoam cups do move easily when they're empty and, and you can <laughs> blow it away. Have you ever had, sorry, have you ever had a, a case where a dowser was trying to use deception as oh, yeah. as self deception? Oh, yeah. Sometimes yeah. Trying to cheat? yeah, we've got a couple of those on videotape, as a matter of fact. Uh, Right. They, they go to the beach, they say they can find gold, and they, they, right here, and they've got the crosshairs on it and everything, and they dig and dig and dig and say, oh, I think I see it. And they go in with their hand, and they come up with something, and, oh, and the gold is always free of sand when it comes up. <laughs> doesn't seem to have taken on any of the sand. So we, we've had people try that sort of thing, yes, but by and large, not much, certainly with, not with dowsers. Dowsers are honestly self-deluded. They're honest folks. And uh, they're the most shocked of all. And whenever they're asked if they want to repeat it, they say, no, this is the kind of thing that shouldn't be tested. And we never hear from them again. I said, it shouldn't be tested because it doesn't work. We had another question here. Uh, yeah, I was just curious, uh, have you ever heard of any testing being done to an individual where after the test results, they come to a realization that perhaps they do not have whatever power they claim? Yeah, well, yes, on occasion, like, as in the dowsing test in Australia with the Australia, pardon me. Uh, and our friend Dick Smith there, who, who paid for a whole comprehensive set of, of dowsing tests there, and we had 11 dowsers. We gathered them in his office after that and stood them up there, and Dick said, I, I have to ask him a question. He said, uh, how many of you still think you've got dowsing powers? And they, they failed miserably, just right down the drain. And they all put up their hands, then one fellow did this sort of thing and lowered his hand. And so Dick pointed out and said, you lowered your hand? And he said, yes. He said, I, I'm... I'm beginning to doubt now, maybe I haven't got the dowsing power. And Dick